Welcome to lecture eight. In this lecture, we're going to look at car seats, chairs, and sitting. So with car seats, especially, if you look at car seats, you'll see that most of them fall back there, uh, backwards. So if a seat falls backwards, let's see what happens. So you're sitting in your car and you have to use the clutch and the accelerator so you can see here that when I use the clutch that if the chair comes up under the leg the leg rubs against the chair and it's very restrictive on the leg it's also very restrictive on the hip joint so I have to push against the chair to use the clutch and accelerator and there's a lot of strain on the leg and it's very uncomfortable so I have to if I have to sit in a car for long periods of time, it's very uncomfortable on the pelvic muscles and the leg muscles. So, it's better to make the seat flatter like this, or even put a wedge in so the back is higher than the front. All right? So there you can see here there's less restriction now because the slant is going downwards and if I have to use the clutch there's my leg is much freer and there's less restriction and tension on my hip joint so that's one way you can improve your car seats also your neck joint which is here should be over your seat bones which are here if my neck joint is behind my seat bones, there's a tendency to collapse in the chest. And then to compensate the collapse in the chest, we start to throw our head back to, to look out the window when we drive. So you can see why furniture and chairs have a influence on your posture for good or bad. So what we want again is keep our neck over your seat bones and keep your knee lower than your seat bones also so let's go to chairs again chairs should be flat ideally uh, a lot of chairs actually fall backwards some easy chairs are actually like this so we don't want chairs that fall backwards a flat is much better when we're sitting in chairs it's the same as the car we want your neck joint to be over your seat bones all right you can see when my neck is behind my seat bones tendency to collapse and then to compensate we start throwing the head back so that's what we don't want so when i bring my neck over my seat bones my chest releases upwards and i can work if i'm at a computer or if I'm at a desk, I can uh, work for much longer without getting tired. Also, if I have to, if I have to lean, if I have to lean forward, you can just rotate on your on your seat on your hip joints or your seat bones. Okay, so if you if you have to lean forward, you can lean forward from your seat bones or your hip joints instead of pulling down to grab something. All right, so. You're just using the joint and it's much more efficient if you have to reach for something. And again, you can also sit on the edge of the chair. It's, it's nice to actually sit on the edge of the chair. You can let your, your knees lower again than your seat, than your seat bones. If your, knee if your knee joint is lower than your seat bones, you have much more or much less strain on the legs and the pelvic muscles. All right, so you can let your two knees lower than your uh, seat bones. You can see this is very comfortable for me to sit here and work like this for a long time without getting uncomfortable. You can see also that I don't need back support. You don't need something against your back because the support is coming from your seat bones, not from the back of the chair. So people who think that you have to push push back against the chair you don't have to push back against the chair you only need the support coming from your seat bones and to make sure that your neck 
is in line with your seat bones for the most efficient poise. So that's car seats, sitting and chairs.